Okay, I'm going to show you how to test a power supply. Um, I like to test power supplies using an actual power supply tester. I got in the box here. I keep in a box to prevent any damage, any pins on it, and whatnot. Um, but if you wanted to go through and test a power supply with a voltmeter, you would need to jumper the power supply itself um, by bridging a couple of the connections here and then taking your voltmeter and testing um, each set of color pins uh, from the ground to that and whatnot. So <clears throat> I'm going to show you the easy way of doing it with a power supply tester. I prefer doing it that way because there's a little bit less risk in my opinion. Um, you know you could go through and accidentally short something out if you don't know what you're doing by testing one of these with a voltmeter and two this is just faster so let me uh, get everything I need ready okay this particular power supply tester uh, you got the connection at the end for the main um, it has a 24 pin connection here so if you have a 20 uh, pin power supply uh, you'd want to get a little converter you can get these for like two bucks something like that pretty much anywhere um, that way you can convert from a 20 pin to 24 pin um, you know you plug one in end and then you switch out to 24 because um, otherwise uh, this particular tester will show you that it, basically it's bad basically that four pins aren't giving you power because um, this one actually tests each and every single pin where if you go through and test it manually like I was saying before for voltmeter you'd have to test each one manually to find that this tests them all at the same time and gives you the actual voltage um, the other one you'll want to connect is the four pin as you might be able to see probably not because this looks like it's just glaring out I'm going to tilt an angle uh, you got the P4 connector there then you have you know like an option for the uh, P8 and then extended PCI Express and then you know floppy connector um, normal four pin Molox connector and uh, say it if you wanted to the only thing you need to test the power supply out is the main connector and the four pin and this guy will tell you hey if it's good or not so let's hook that up okay you're probably not going to be able to read this um, but you know it lights up blue so you can see the LED reading um, it's an LCD display don't know why I said LED. Um, and it gives you voltage for you know the 5.1, um, the 12 volt V1, 3.3 volt, uh, the negative 12 volt, the positive 12 volt V2, um, the 5 volt SB, and um, it also gives you uh, the PG. I can never remember what that stands for. I'll probably remember um, when I don't want to, <laughs> as usual. But um, in this particular case I know this power supply is bad and the reason we're not having any issues with it um, on this test is because we're not actually putting it under load if I was to go through and hook something up to this um, SATA it'll probably stress this power supply out enough um, that we could probably test it out some more and find that it's bad so I'm going to actually go through disconnect the power and we're going to hook up a, a SATA to this as well Okay, and pretty much just like I said to you, if I was to go through and hook up a SATA drive, um, it would go through and basically cause some voltage issues with this power supply, and I was, like I said, correct, because uh, I've already tested this one out. Um, basically, the issue is this power supply can't keep consistent current, and every once in a while the voltage will drop, and like I said, you probably can't see it on here, uh, it's just, at least I can't see it through the LCD screen. But um, the voltages are kind of fluctuating just a little bit here every once in a while. And um, I actually tried to let the camera sit here for a couple minutes and let it catch a beep. But um, it beeped a couple times when I first started up, and that was really it. Um, but basically, this power supply tester, it beeps at you if the voltages are too low. I went ahead and disconnected that because um, I didn't want the hard drive to be any noise in the background as I was talking. But um, 
the voltages you want to have basically a plus or minus 5% or less. Um, so basically if you're off um, by like uh, just in general math here, basically 0.5, uh, there's probably something wrong with your power supply. And this was actually um, on just the measurements alone without any extra load. It was pretty close to that. And when you hooked that up, it was even closer to it. Um, I think the 5 volt was measuring about uh, 4.8 or something like that, I think it was. Um, and then every once in a while it dropped down to, you know, like 4.3. So that's a sign that this thing's bad. Um, you want to have those voltages as close to the actual numbers as possible. Um, you know when you get a good quality power supply, you test it out. The voltages will stay rock solid on those numbers. If you have a cheaper one, they'll be basically lower than the amount. Not that there's anything wrong with that power supply. You know, it would work. But you don't want to have... Um, numbers significantly lower uh, than the actual amount it's supposed to be. Like I said, plus minus five percent and it's a bad power supply. You can't have over voltage um, that's a plus five percent so if you had like 5.5 volts coming out of this thing you're going to cook your motherboard so. Okay, I was telling you how you could um, basically test your power supply manually with a voltmeter uh, what you want to do first is, of course, have a voltmeter. Uh, turn it on to your um, DC volts. I recommend go ahead and just putting on DC volts 20. Um, this is what mine supports. Yours might have something else, but basically you'll be measuring um, less than 20 volts on this. So if yours has a setting like that, go ahead and use that. Um, and what you want to do is take a piece of wire of course, you know, get your power supply, um, the main connector for your power supply out. And you want to basically jumper it. Uh, you want to connect the um, green wire and any black wire uh, on here to basically jumper it. Um, as you can kind of see the colors there, there's the green, there's the black. And I've gone through and jumpered that. Uh, make sure that wire's in there real good and tight. You'll want to go through take the power cord connect that up to it and then with your multimeter take your uh, negative lead attach it to uh, any of the ground connectors these are should be black on yours um, you should have one all the way at the end here you know and you need two hands for this so I'm not going to really be able to show you here jam it on in there take your uh, red connector, your positive, and then attach it to any of the colored connectors. Um, the red, blue, um, purple, um, gray, uh, yellow, and I um, can't think of any others at the moment. But go ahead, test each one of those, write down your results. You want to test each one of the, the lines. Um, don't bother testing any of the um, black ones because it's not going to get anything on there. But each color, go through, test that, uh, write it down. Make sure to test each line because could be just one of these are bad and that's it. Um, usually the automatic testers like I showed you in my other video or perhaps earlier in this video. don't know if my time will allow for it. Um, uh, those can basically go through, test the sum of all of the connections and tell you, okay, your voltage is good, but I won't point out, hey, one of these is bad. So that's when you want to go through and test with this. Um, like I said before, make sure it's all within 5% uh, tolerance. Um, you have a 12-volt connection, a 5-volt connection. Um, you know, just go through make sure those are all within tolerance, um, you know, 3.3. And uh, you should be good to go. Until next time, I'll see you later.